Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Mario Party 9. <laughs> well, told you what I was going to say. Welcome to the episode with the museum. In the last episode, we just cleaned up the remaining minigames we did not play within Mario Party 9 in free play mode. So now we're at the museum where we can exchange points for stuff in within this. So in the stages, you can use your points to grab uh, DK's Jungle Ruin, which is the seventh board of this game. Master difficulty computers, which are really hard. Staff's best, which gives you uh, the staff's best time within the solo challenge of this game. N not the solo mode, the solo challenge in, in minigame mode. And the best part about this game, boss rush. So, uh, yeah, they all have their points listed on the side so you can see them. Another thing is that within the records of the museum, you can actually see any records if you did. So like minigame records, so like anything you do will show up. Uh, the time attack records, which is a solo mode of the minigame mode, you can see there. And also the solo records of the game where you can just see these things. There's nothing interesting in this. There's also the sound test, which is literally just the sound test. You can just buy all the stuff you need. And then the two interesting parts about this game, and this is where I'm going to be doing a lot of editing as well. The vehicles. Each single vehicle, there's three vehicles per. There's three vehicles per uh, stage. So, uh, just buy one and uh, see which one you want. As you've seen on the LP, I've been using only the last ones. So, uh, basically the last ones of each of the uh, cars are, are based on the actual stage boss of the board, <laughs> within story mode at least. So they're all pretty fun. So like you can also change the vehicles, which at this point, after the snap of my finger, we I'm going to be showing every single uh, vehicle in the background of a 1v1 board to show you guys each of the differences between them. So I hope it's been going right now. They all have their own like unique little design as well. And I'm actually as well with the recording, I'm going to put like an, another still image of the same recording in the top right to show like their base form. So uh, it's pretty fun and they're all little. They're all really cute. They're all really good designed uh, stuff, except some of them are pretty bad, in my opinion. Some are good, some are bad. It's pretty good. Also, like the little toad icon that's there also tell you uh, what you're going to be on as well. So uh, it's that simple. They're just cool little, cool little like details for the, uh, the thing. So, uh, not much, just like a little thing to see. Um, I, I have my favorites from them. They're mostly like the boss ones, but in general, I'm probably going to go through each of like my favorites and just or go through each of them. And at the end of like me explaining all these things, I'm going to be telling you what each of my favorites are, because surprisingly, surprisingly enough, they're not all the boss ones. So. uh, Yeah, hopefully you guys have been enjoying this series so far. This has been a pretty fun uh, experience for me as well, going from like editing the Pico Park LP that I had with my buddies that at the time of me recording this episode of Mario Party 9 has not been completed. We are missing two worlds. Why do I keep bringing this up? It's like literally rubbing salt on my wounds. We may never know, but we are still not in this. I want to say the same mindset. We are like to definitely not in the same mindset as we were when we first played uh, Pico Park. But uh, in general, this is just us just playing around. We just make this joke around, but in general, I hope you guys, have, as I said, been enjoying this LP because this is my first ever like solo LP where I'm just here sitting down, playing with or talking to you guys about the game. And hopefully at best showing you how to 100% complete this game. 
Mario Party in general is not a game where you can 100% complete. The only way to 100% complete this game is that you, uh... Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, the whole way you 100% complete this game is that you play every single mode in the game, unlock everything in the game, and at the end of this, I'll show you also something you can unlock as well. So, uh, yeah. We're almost done within each of the uh, things. Uh, and actually, I get to show you what each of my favorite uh, ones are as well. Because for now, I'm going to leave them on those. So if I ever play this game again with some friends and we just decided to play Mario Party 9, you're probably going to see them. For the first world, it's actually the Riggedy Ride. It reminds me of an old, like, an old-timey car, which is pretty fun to do. Within, um... Bob Bomb Factory, it's still the King Bob Bomb bus. Because in general, that little crown is so good for when the bomb falls, it lands perfectly in there. For uh, Boo's Horror Castle, is the float mattress. It's literally just a flying um, bed. It's just a flying bed. It's kind of funny. For uh, mm, excuse me. For the uh, blooper, I'm actually a very big fan of the sub the submarine. It's Kind of cute, man. I love I love the blooper boat. It reminds me a lot about the blooper, the blooper mobile as I like to call it from Mario Kart Double Dash. I'm gonna put the, the car and the name on screen. It, it, I like it, but I like the uh, submarine better. I also love the core explorer. All the fucking vehicles within uh, Mario Party or within Blooper Beach are really cool. They're all just boats. In um, Magma Mine, I do love the chain jump one a lot. The bone one's a good second. The bone barrel is really good. But I do love the chain chomp one. Metal, metal minecart going up above the uh, the magma. It's kind of cool. Within uh, Bowser Station, is actually uh, the shiny saucer. Though the the uh, Bowser one is also pretty cool. They're both up there. I love the shiny saucer. But Starship Bowser also wins me out because it's another like UFO type thing, but it's in the design of Bowser. So I'm keeping it in the Starship Bowser. Now time for uh, DK's Jungle Ruin, which, and funny thing, is the Jungle Junker. Beautiful name. I love the banana sliders. I think it's actually called the banana slider. DK's banana slider. It's just a giant banana. The cart uh, next to the Jungle Junker, son of a bitch, is the barrel roller, which I, in my opinion, I just think of it as a reference to Mario Kart Double Dash, the, the cart in that game. I'll put this, the picture of that on screen as well. Uh, it's a good one, but I love the Jungle Junker. It reminds me of like my, the first ever car I saw when I was like growing up, which was a Jeep. And I still love Jeeps to this day. So those are all my favorites, uh, my favorite vehicles in this game. So like if we ever play this game again, for some goddamn reason with friends, you're going to see these again. And then you're just going to be reminded of the LP we went through. Now time for the final thing of the museum. The stars. Constellations. Return the mini star stolen by Bowser to the night sky. Review constellation. Each of the... Uh, oops. Cool. Did the back accident. You can actually uh, buy each of these. Each of these um, majors and minors are all based on characters and stuff within the board. So you can actually probably guess what each of these names are going to go to. So uh, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep going down these uh, these names so you guys can understand which one are the ones. If you can, if you guess correctly, you guess correctly. But all of these uh star constellations are just for show they're just for uh oh, excuse me they're all there just for um the, the night sky they're just for this part in particular they're just extras at least you get to use your points for something but these are just like 50 each and then uh they're also uh like 50 so like 50 by 50 is like 250 points in total once you get once you buy some, you can actually go to the night sky and press up to shoot some of the shoot some fireworks. And I'm actually going to go through each of the uh, things and outline them. 
You actually do go away after a while. So, where are you? There we go. Super, uh, Super Bro Major, a constellation named after a famous hero for his mustache, red cap, and indomitable spirit. He's also quite popular with the princesses. Super Bro Minor, a constellation named after the brother of a hero. He's still pretty brave in his own right, even if he's scared of ghosts, monsters, and everything. Princess Major, a constellation named after a beautiful princess who has a tendency to get kidnapped by reptilian villains. What is the next? Princess Minor, a constellation named after a princess who enjoys tennis, golf, soccer, and not getting kidnapped. Hero's Best Buddy, a constellation resembling Mario's trustworthy companion. When he jumps, he appears to pedal in the air, which is the cutest thing you ever did see. A constellation, the Egg Thrower, a constellation resembling a strange creature that launches eggs from her mouth. How a Horrible is that ribbon? Scheming Major. A constellation named after a pesky prankster who can't help but involve his friends in his get rich quick schemes. Scheming Minor. A constellation named after a man whose dastardly deeds were so devious they caused the tips of his mustache to point straight up. The Advisor. A constellation inspired by the loyal attendant of Princess Peach. Though small, there are a few who work as hard. Speedy Shell, a constellation that brings to mind a ferocious shelled warrior. When kicked, he is capable of spinning away at frightening speeds. Brick Blocks, a constellation named after blocks that break when struck from below. Be sure to break those blocks with your fist and not your head. Fire Flower, a constellation resembling a lovely flower, though it makes a surprisingly tasty snack. It's spicy enough to cause any who eats it to breathe fire. Brown Soldier, a constellation inspired by the stalwart mushroom monster who never gives up, no matter how many times they're squashed. Pipe, a constellation based on a magical plumbing that causes those who enter it to be transported to fantastic places. The Gluttonous Globber, Gluttonous Gobbler, Blech. a constellation based on a species of carnivorous plants that will eat almost anything. Some species are even said to breathe fire. Mushroom, a constellation based on a type of those that causes any who eat it to grow bigger. Straight shot, a constellation named after a bullet that always flies in a straight line. Some find this attitude quite charming, others less so. Hello, mole, a constellation that takes its name from a mole famed for his digging. Some people think he, he was cooler when he was still on the ground. Sharp shell. A constellation named after a turtle who hides beneath a spiky shell. If you step on him by mistake, there will be pain afoot. Nail shell. A constellation based on a turtle with troublesome hobby of lobbing hammers. Think of all he can get done if he put those to good use. Killer caterpillar. A constellation that calls to mind a gigantic caterpillar. Rumor has it that a ride upon his back is more comfortable than you think. Timberheads. A constellation based on tree spirits who inhabit many forests. They're a little creepy, but super nice when you get to know them. Cold Guy. A constellation named after a snowman who are fond of hurling snowballs. Don't worry, the snow they throw isn't part of their bodies. Fierce Fish. A constellation that takes its name from the pudgy fish who are often been seen happily leaping through the sky. Snowbird, a constellation based on penguins who liked to race their friends across the ice on their bellies. No, I did not edit this. This is the exact color they use. This is going on the same Discord. I've been uploading these videos for promotion. You guys know what I'm talking about. On purpose or on purpose, a constellation based on the goggle wearing dolphin. What does sea mammal need goggles? You sure ask a lot of questions. Dolphino Islander, a constellation based on the strange race of islanders with plant with plants sprouting from their heads. Dancing and wrestling are their great are great lovers. 
Blooper Reel. That's a really good name. A constellation based on a gigantic squid, Mario has fought this squid countless times. Sometimes winning, sometimes losing. That's just life. Hermit Claw. A constellation based on the curious crustacean that has long defied classification. Hermit Crab? Crayfish? Shrimp? He's not telling. Bomb Miner. A constellation named after a curious type of wind-up walking mob. Red and black varieties exist, but both are powerful. Bomb Major. His constellation is inspired. A constellation inspired by the king of all bombs. His explosion is every bit as big as his highs indicates. Approach with extreme caution. Bound Biter. Constellation named after mysterious, endlessly chomping creatures. Thank goodness for the chains of Robial devoured. Ghost Major and Ghost Minor. Constellation based on the little ghosts who cannot bear the gaze of others, turning away to hide their shame. Poor little guys. Or are they? Ghost Major. Constellation representing the king of timid ghosts. Despite his impressive size and cool crown, he doesn't like being looked at. Rodent Thief. A constellation based on rats that prefer to attack their prey in large groups. Like all rodents and villains, they should be handled with care. Skull Shell. A constellation that calls to mind a skeletal turtle. Though these turtles crumble when stepped on, their ability to reassemble themselves is truly weird. Sore Stone. A constellation based on a towering rock wall that loves to topple onto its foes. Unfortunately, this reveals a weak point on its back. Drop Bat. A constellation based on bats that hang around in dark places. Always seeing the world upside down has warped their view of life. They're just from Australia, what do you mean? Malevolent Mask. A constellation based on a creature so shy he wears a mask to hide his face. What's behind the mask? Your guess is as good as mine. My motherfucking motto and my spirit man. Shy guy. Riled Rock. A constellation inspired by a giant slab of stone with anger management issues. He's heavy too, so woe be to anyone who tries to use him for shade. Bad Ball Boy. A constellation that calls to mind a fiendish turtle who spits spike balls at his foes. Nobody ever told him how rude that is, so it's hard to blame him. Magic Shell. Constellation of a turtle who often rides the skies on his broom. Despite being great at his job, he also seems so unhappy. Fireballs. A constellation based on the bubbling balls of fire that shoot up from pools of magma. They're super hot, so touching them is a big no-no. Koopa Miner. A constellation based on the spoiled son of a dark lord. He may be a bit of a brat, but he tries hard to impress his dad. And that's never easy. Koopa Major. The constellation based on the Lord of Koopa troops himself. Though selfish and prone to fits of rage, he takes good care of his underlings. Jungle Major. Jungle Major. God, I cannot speak. The constellation named after the legendary Lord of the Jungle. He often wears neckties as a sign of his professional dedication to bananas. Speaking of that, banana, a constellation evocate, evocate of that tasty treat beloved by animals everywhere, bananas. In the jungle, they're quite valuable. Barrel, a constellation that calls to mind a mysterious barrel. Some say barrels shoot people into the sky. Others say barrels store things. Could be both. Jungle Miner, a constellation named after the long-tailed Diddy Kong. Don't let that t-shirt and cap fool you. He's as serious about bananas as anybody else. And with that, we have looped around back to the beginning of the fireworks show. And that is all for the museum. We can just look at a look at the staff credits for this, which we are probably going to do. I'm going to let these credits roll. The only thing I'm going to say is this entire Mario Party experience is pretty fun. 
And though this may be either my last episode or the episode before extras mode, I just want to say that I hope that you guys have been enjoying this LP as much as I've been doing this and creating this. This is my first ever LP with a capture card, first ever LP with a microphone. So the only thing I'm going to say is that I hope this guys, I hope this has been as eventful and as good as I hope I've been showing. But with this whole disclaimer out of the way, there's only one thing I'm going to say. Please, please don't get mad at me if I have to, if I make a remake of this LP again, years down the line. Nobody loves their first LP. Nobody loves when they do an LP again and they get better at their job. So if you see this LP again later down the line, please don't get mad at me. I just want to do these games or I just want to do videos in these games as much justice I can do through the virtual screen. So with that disclaimer and my little speech about this game out of the way, I am going to just leave these credits on. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Talk to you all then. Hope you guys have a beautiful day.